so that the generation to come of your children that shall rise up after you and the stranger that shall come from a far land shall say, when they see the plagues of that land and the sicknesses which the Lord hath laid upon it, and that the whole land thereof is brimstone and salt and burning, that it is not sown, nor beareth, nor any grass groweth therein, like the overthrow of Sodom and Gomorrah, Adma and Zeboim, which the Lord overthrew in his anger and in his wrath. Even all nations shall say, Wherefore hath the Lord done thus unto this land? What meaneth the heat of this great anger? Then men shall say, Because they have forsaken the covenant of the Lord God of their fathers, which he made with them when he brought them forth out of the land of Egypt. The tough conversations must continue. If we do not discuss the love-hate conversations, how are we to heal as a people? To the strangers that profess to love the Elohim of Israel, regardless of his color, how can you move forward if we cannot address yours and your nation's present wickedness? How can you serve the Most High and not repent of your sins and the sins of your fathers? If we cannot talk about your past and present, you have yet to repent of your sins. You can't serve the Most High in the awakening the way you were taught in the church. The church via religion do not serve the Elohim of Israel. The church do not serve in the spirit and in truth. God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. We can no longer bury the truth underneath mountains of lies that the strangers and their nations wish to hide behind false history and misinformation about the indigenous black people. Regardless of what your people and nations do to hide their hands in participating in destroying the indigenous black people, what is done in darkness will come to light. The Most High is revealing the skeletons in your nation's closet as well as the indigenous people. Despite of the kingdom of darkness, many attempts to conceal the truth by plagiarizing the indigenous people's history, the truth of the Most High's words will never pass away. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall not pass away. If the spirit of the Most High is present and operating in his people, the truth will be made known regardless of the alterations done to the scriptures. It is the spirit of the Most High that reveal truth. The altered scriptures are a reference as well as evidence for those who still need signs and wonders to believe the Most High. Then said Jesus unto him, Except ye see signs and wonders, ye will not believe. Remember, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. The scriptures went on to say, without faith, it is impossible to please the Most High. Many people profess to have faith in the Most High. Israelites, now than ever is the time to exercise your faith in the Most High. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a reward of them that diligently seek him. We must graduate to the level of believing the Most High, regardless of what the seen things are revealing. Until the indigenous black people can understand, they will continue to suffer for their transgressions. The indigenous people are not victims nor innocent in their oppression. If you want to be free and no longer want to be oppressed by your great grandchildren, repent and serve the Most High in the spirit and in truth. The Most High gave you instructions on how to be free. Follow the instructions the Most High gave to you. The scripture said it was through your own fault that you discontinued from the heritage he gave you. The book of Jeremiah said due to your iniquities, the Most High allow your enemies to do these things to you. And thou even thyself shalt discontinue from thine heritage that I gave thee. And I will cause thee to serve thine enemies in the land which thou knowest not. For ye have kindled a fire in mine anger, which shall burn for ever. Why criest thou for thine affliction? Thy sorrow is incurable for the multitude of thine iniquity, because thy sins were increased. I have done these things unto thee. The kingdom of darkness used a disease called self-hate, 
to oppress the indigenous black people. Additionally, Satan used the self-hate disease to cause many indigenous black people to white out their bloodline. I will say this repeatedly. A person who white out their seed or participating whiting out their bloodline is no different from a hybrid stealing the indigenous people's history. You are contributing to your own demise. Today, there are many Israelites whiting out the royal bloodline. Many of them are deceived into believing they are creating indigenous black children with their strange wives. Many of them believe they can save their strange wives and children. I have heard Israelite males say their strange wives and children are saved through them. Are you Jesus now? Your blood and self-righteousness is so pure that you can save people now? The scriptures did say there would be false Christs and prophets in the last days. For there shall arise false Christs and false prophets and shall show great signs and wonders insomuch that if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. I believe the Israelite males who truly believe they can save their strange wives and children are among the false Christs and prophets that are coming in the last days. If the self-righteous Israelites can save their strange wives and children, how come you can't save yourself or remove the curses from the Israelite bloodline? Somehow you have enough righteous blood to save your strange wives and children. When it comes to your people, they need the Messiah. The scripture said the righteous are barely saved. I am not sure how you can save your strange wives and children. And if the righteous scarcely be saved, where shall the ungodly and the sinner appear? The Most High always made the Israelite males put away their strange wives and children. Your children being born from unholy unions are a testimony against you. The scripture said a bastard cannot enter his congregation, not even to the 10th generation. Those very children are your oppressors. There are many Israelites and indigenous heathens who reject their image. Many indigenous people love the image of Satan that they seek for their children and great-grandchildren to look like a leper. To the indigenous people who hate themselves and their dark skin, the scripture said you were made in the image of the Most High. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he, him, male and female created he, them. You can't say you love the Most High and a servant to the Most High, then seek to alter your appearance to resemble the children of the fallen. If you hate your image, then you hate the image of the Most High. If you seek to look like the children of the fallen, Satan is your father. Some indigenous people love darkness that they lust after recessive genes. Many indigenous black people cannot comprehend that they are the blueprint to humanity. The indigenous black people are the only pure humans. Us. And in fact, the, the Africans who came out from Africa have no evidence of any Neanderthal genes in them. No evidence of admixture. So they're the real pure humans. Homo sapiens. Really, really interesting. And it gives you a lot to think about. Anything outside your image and features is a new species. The scriptures confirm when the sons of God, the watchers, procreate with the daughters of men and had children. The abominable union brought forth the other species of mankind and its various subspecies. The other subspecies are a combination of the seed of the fallen procreating within and the animals. Remember, the seed of the fallen sin against the animals as well. And they begin to sin against birds and beasts and reptiles and fish, and to devour one another's flesh and drink the blood. Many animals have parasites living in their fur. When you watch documentaries on wild animals, many of these animals have ticks and other parasites living in their fur. The other species of mankind suffer from the same condition. They have parasites in their fur. They are the only species of mankind that suffer from parasites living in their hair. The indigenous people do not suffer from that condition. If an indigenous person suffered from parasites living in their hair, I am sure they were entangled with the other species of mankind. 
When you procreate with the other species of mankind, you do not know what genes are passing down to your children. Too many indigenous black people are blind by the light skin, colored eyes, and good hair stereotype. If the other species of mankind had good hair, parasites wouldn't be living in it. The B system programmed the indigenous black people to believe recessive genes are beautiful. Melanin is beautiful. How can you be the blueprint to humanity and allow the inferior species convince you that your DNA is inferior and your image is ugly? Too many indigenous people have strayed far from their roots. Why are you embarrassed to resemble your creator? Many indigenous people believe if they resemble the oppressor's children, they will live a better life in the beast system. Many indigenous black people willingly procreate with the children of the serpent seed to change the image they hate. I am glad that I don't suffer from the self-hate disease many indigenous people contracted in the beast system. You are doing yourself a disservice when you procreate with the other species of mankind. It is proven their genetic makeup is nothing but recessive genes. They have animal DNA and other abominable genes in their blood. Recently, they successfully transplant a pig kidney into a person. I can guarantee the patient was from the other species of mankind. Because the other species of mankind have animal DNA, of course the organ transplant would be successful. For example is imagine you took a gorilla, treated the gorilla exactly as it is, but were able to generate a human looking face. Right? So a gorilla with a human face. How would we think about that entity? Third example, a humanized Im immune system. Took a mouse, uh, and we do this, we have these at Harvard, for example, and created an immune system in order to test drugs, think about HIV, for example, that was humanized. So not the brain, but just uh, the immune system was very human-like. And last example is actually uh, valve replacements, heart valve replacements. So Jesse Helms, the senator, had a pig valve replacement years ago, right? So there's a piece of an animal in him. Right? So these are four examples of different kinds of... If they are transplanting animal organs into so-called humans, what else are they tampering with? Why is it difficult for the indigenous people to believe the beast that walk like a man is not human but a hybrid counterfeit? Stop misidentifying these people. For example, there are Israelites in the awakening that assign the Edomite bloodline to the white race. What bloodline would an Israelite who procreate with the seed of the fallen be if the white race is Edom? Not all bloodlines intermingle with Esau's descendants. How come the Octoroon from the other indigenous bloodlines resemble the white race? The kingdom of darkness intermingle is seed with every indigenous bloodline. The scripture says Satan planted tares among the wheat and went his way. In addition, the scripture said the serpent would mix itself with the seed of men. But while men slept, his enemy came and sowed tares among the wheat and went his way. And whereas thou sawest iron mixed with miry clay, they shall mingle themselves with the seed of men. But they shall not cleave one to another, even as iron is not mixed with clay. The Most High said in the book of Genesis that he would put enmity between the woman's seed and the serpent seed. When the Most High said this, he was talking to Satan. Could the other species of mankind be the serpent seed the Most High spoke of in the book of Genesis? And the Lord God said unto the serpent, Because thou hast done this, thou art cursed above all cattle, and above every beast of the field. Upon thy belly shalt thou go, and dust shalt thou eat all the days of thy life. And I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. By the fourth generation, the children of the fallen and the indigenous people share the same appearance with the white race. The Caucasian species is the common denominator. Esau is not the father to the white race. Mont Seir, named after Ham's great-grandson Seir, is not the only place that was inhabited by the cave dwellers, the seed of the fallen. Lot's descendants inherited land that was once occupied by the seed of the fallen as well. And Seir, the son of Hur, 
son of Hivi, son of Canaan, went and found a valley opposite to Mount Paran, and he built a city there, and he and his seven sons and his household dwell there. And he called the city which he built Seir, according to his name, that is the land of Seir unto this day. These are the families of the children of Ham, according to their languages and cities, when they were scattered to their countries after the tower. And when thou comest nigh over against the children of Ammon, distress them not, nor meddle with them. For I will not give thee of the land of the children of Ammon any possession, because I have given it unto the children of Lot for a possession. That also was accounted a land of giants. Giants dwelt therein in old time. And the Ammonites call them Zamzumims, a people great and many and tall as the Anakims. But the Lord destroyed them before them, and they succeeded them and dwelt in their stead. The scriptures reveal Esau's descendants destroyed the cave dwellers that dwell in Mount Seir. The descendants of Esau, not Esau himself, but his descendants, intermingle with the Hivites who are of the bloodline of Ham that dwell on Mount Seir. Remember, Esau married two women from the bloodline of Ham. History and the scriptures has proven Ham descendants to be indigenous black people. The Emims dwelt therein in times past, a people great and many and tall as the Anakims, which also were accounted giants as the Anakims, but the Moabites called them Emims. The Orims also dwelt in Seir before time, but the children of Esau succeeded them when they had destroyed them from before them and dwelt in their stead, as Israel did unto the land of his possession, which the Lord gave unto them, as he did to the children of Esau, which dwelt in Seir, when he destroyed the Orims from before them, and they succeeded them and dwelt in their stead, even unto this day. Stop assigning the indigenous bloodlines of the scriptures to the other species of mankind. They can't even tell you the origins to the Neanderthal DNA they carry. Whiting yourself out is not going to fix the problems in the indigenous community. The root to all your problems are spiritual. You can't fix what is spiritual with the flesh. The beast culture created a caste system that determines a person's race by how much indigenous DNA they carry in their genes. A quadroon has 75% to 85% Caucasian DNA. Despite the caste system being regulated by the amount of indigenous blood you have in your DNA, a person's appearance play a major role to what race he or she would be placed into. A quadroon person is white passing and carry more Caucasian DNA than indigenous. The next level in the beast culture's caste system is the octoroon. According to the beast system, these are the individuals who are 87.5 and above Caucasian. The Octoroons supposedly have 12.5% Black Indigenous DNA. Whenever it comes to the Kingdom of Darkness, they are never truthful with their agendas and facts. The Octoroon would be the equivalent to the fourth generation. Remember, Satan imitates everything the Most High does. The fourth generation determine if your blood is cleansed or completely whited out. An Octoroon is a Caucasian person with zero to little indigenous blood. Many Israelites in the awakening need to understand the process of cutting off your bloodline. If a person is whited out, they no longer carry their indigenous great-grandparents' DNA. When you no longer have indigenous DNA in your genes, you are no longer human. Remember, the indigenous black people are the original humans and the blueprint to humanity. An indigenous person whose offspring only procreate with the other species of mankind, their bloodline is cut off. The offspring to the indigenous person can no longer claim their great-grandparents' bloodline. Too many Israelites in the awakening are assigning Japheth, Shem, and Ham's bloodline to people whose bloodline were cut off. The beast system recognized the fourth generation as another race. It is time for the indigenous people to do the same. The fourth generation of non-indigenous people are of a different bloodline and should be placed in the other species of mankind's category. A biracial person is 50% indigenous and 50% Caucasian. 
When the biracial procreate with a non-indigenous person, the child is now 75% Caucasian and 25% indigenous black person. This individual is a quadroon in the B system. When the quadroon procreate with a Caucasian person, the child is now 100% Caucasian with no indigenous blood. The B system recognized this person as an octoroon and placed the octoroon in the Caucasian race, the fourth generation. The synagogue of Satan do not want you to view the octoroon in the perspective of having no indigenous blood. So they say the octoroon has one eighth indigenous blood which is 12.5%. If the indigenous black people were truly creating black children when they procreate with the other species of mankind, how come the indigenous black people's population has not increased? The mixed and biracial population has increased significantly over the past 10 years. If the beast system considered the mixed race and biracial people black, how come the indigenous people's population has yet to increase in America? African Americans are still 14% of the United States population. The African American male is the leading group in creating biracial and mixed children. How come black people's population in America has not increased if the mixed race and biracial are black? The reason the indigenous population has not increased and the Caucasian population remains the majority in America the biracial and mixed race people often procreate with the Caucasian species. Also, the quadroon and the octroon people are white in the B system. Remember, the quadroon and the octroon are the third and fourth generation. Most biracial people inherit the self-hate curse from their fathers and choose to procreate with the other species of mankind to further erase the indigenous blood. This is a well-known strategy the Kingdom of Darkness used to increase the seed of the Fallen's population as well as whiting out nations and bloodlines to claim the indigenous people's history and land inheritance all over the world. The Octoroon is your average white person living today. The beast system recognized the Octoroon to be a white person. They would place the Octoroon into the Caucasian race. To the minority crowd that believe you are what your father is regardless of the mother. Do you consider your octoroon male great-grandchild with the strange woman black? Because your octoroon male great-grandchild with the strange woman is the white man today. Indigenous black people, you are the root to their foundation. If you can't accept the quadroon and octoroon as black, how can you accept the biracial who make the quadroon to be black as well? I hope the indigenous black people can begin to see race was invented to confuse the masses. But God is not the author of confusion, but of peace, as in all churches of the saints. The indigenous black people are the root to the human species. Anybody who consider themselves to be human must have indigenous blood. If they do not carry indigenous blood, they are not human. In the world we live in, it's either you're black white or mixed. There is no such thing as race. An Asian person is a subspecies to the Caucasian species. Have you noticed the name similarity? There are white Asians, black Asians, or mixed Asians. The mixed Asians would be the biracial. This would be the same concept to all the so-called race the beast system group everyone into to erase bloodline. While the indigenous black male believe he is creating black children with the strange women, the synagogue of Satan is quietly procreating with your biracial children and making quadroons and octoroons to increase their population. The self-hate mentality is working against you. The population of the Caucasian species remain the majority in America, while your population remains stagnant despite of the increase to the mixed race community. Most indigenous black males do not accept the quadroon and the octoroon male child from the strange woman to be their flesh and blood. Deep down inside, most of you know you cut off your bloodline when you procreate with the strange women. That is why you do not accept the octoroon male child as your flesh and blood. Because your lust of the flesh supersedes your love for the most high, you continue in your rebellion. When a man serves the Most High with a pure heart, 
the Most High allowed him to see his children to the fourth generation. After this lived Job an hundred and forty years, and saw his sons, and his sons' as sons, even four generations. What is the logic behind the doctrine, you are what your father is? Satan is using your own doctrines to work against you. You must love yourself to be fruitful and multiply. Hating what comes from you is a stronghold the kingdom of darkness has placed on you. The indigenous black people who hate themselves need to seek deliverance. You are helping the kingdom of darkness destroy your own people and community. So ought men to love their wives as their own bodies? He that loveth his wife loveth himself. The fourth generation is important because you could either cleanse your bloodline from the serpent seed or cut off your bloodline. To reverse the infiltration of the serpent bloodline in your family, your children must procreate with indigenous black people and continue to do so in every generation to cleanse your bloodline from the infiltrated gene of the serpent. By the fourth generation of procreating with indigenous black people, your bloodline is restored. In the case of the Israelite heritage, your descendants must procreate within the Israelite bloodline to return. The children that are begotten of them shall enter into the congregation of the Lord in their third generation. The Most High often used the fourth generation. The scriptures reveal to us the story of Jehu who did well in the sight of the Most High. Yah chose Jehu's descendants from the fourth generation to sit on the throne. And the Lord said unto Jehu, Because thou hast done well in executing that which is right in mine eyes, and hast done unto the house of Ahab according to all that was in mine heart, thy children of the fourth generation shall sit on the throne of Israel. Indigenous black people, if you dislike the oppression, why not change your behavior? Transgressing the laws of the Most High to do as thou wilt is not going to end your oppression. Seeking to erase yourself by procreating with the other species of mankind is not going to end your oppression but increase your oppression. Your octoroon great-grandchildren with the strange women are the ones shooting you dead in the police uniform. Your octoroon great-grandchildren are the ones making laws oppressing you. The Most High allow your biracial quadroon and octoroon children to destroy you to be a testimony against you many of you do not want to view your children in that perspective you want to believe you are making the world a better place when you procreate with the other species of mankind the time has come for you to stop rejecting the most high if you want to be on top again you must submit to the most high submit yourselves therefore to god resist the devil and he will flee from you. When Abraham and Sarah wanted to help the Most High in fulfilling his promise to make Abraham a father to many nations, Ishmael was the solution Abraham and Sarah came up with. The work of the flesh always backfired. Ishmael became a thorn to Isaac and his descendants until this day, just like how the children from the strange men and women are a thorn in your flesh. And Sarah saw the son of Hagar, the Egyptian, which she had borne unto Abraham, mocking. Wherefore she said unto Abraham, Cast out this bondwoman and her son, but the son of this bondwoman shall not be heir with my son, even with Isaac. Your children with the strange women and men are the ones against you. Many indigenous people fail to take accountability for their actions. They allow the work of the flesh to supersede the will of the Most High in their lives. The other race of people that many of you despise are your children or descendants of your forefathers. If you dislike their behavior, the scripture said, train a child in the way they should go, and when they're old, they will never depart. Train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. Indigenous black people, your children with the strange women and men will always be a testimony against you. Stop running away from the abomination you created with the kingdom of darkness. The time has come for you to repent. If not, your children with the strange women and men will continue to be a thorn in your flesh. Remember, judgment starts with you. For I will take you from among the heathen and gather you out of all countries and will bring you into your own land. 
then will I sprinkle clean water upon you, and ye shall be clean from all your filthiness, and from all your idols will I cleanse you. A new heart also will I give you, and a new spirit will I put within you. And I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh, and I will give you an heart of flesh. And I will put my spirit within you, and cause you to walk in my statutes, and ye shall keep my judgments and do them. <laughs>